All right, so this is going to be a video that's going to be a tutorial of Milia in uh, Axon Core Plus R. This is not meant to be like a full-blown tutorial. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are better resources out there and uh, more qualified people who can provide that kind of content or have already provided that kind of content. This is meant to be a tutorial for people who are familiar with how this character works and who have already played the character in Exert and are picking up this game, since currently Plus R is the... Guilty Gear version that has the best net play right now. So a lot of people are playing this game, and a lot of people are playing this character because they play this character in Exert. So not like a full-blown tutorial, but tutorial meant for people transitioning from Exert to this game, okay? So in general, uh, this character still plays the same. Uh, she's still like a really fast character, and you know, your main goal is to uh, try to win neutral, get a knockdown, and uh, you have really, really strong neutral game tools. You don't really have a lot of damage. But you have really strong tools. Uh, you can deal with almost anything, but they're all very situational. Get a knockdown, you have a really strong mix-up and uh, try to win from that kind of uh, offensive position. So, small differences. For one, Milia is faster. She feels so much faster in this game. But even though she feels faster, so does everyone else, because in general, Exert is a slower game than uh, Plus R. So, um, even though she's faster, so is everyone else. So, relatively, it's about the same. Uh, in terms of difficulty, she's actually one of the harder characters to play in the game because of how situational combos are, especially uh, picking up combos from like random hits. And you just, need, you just need a really high level precision to play here, which is really not that different actually compared to Exert, but more difficult compared to Exert for sure. Now, one thing though that makes this character appealing for new players, even though she's one of the harder characters, is FRCs. So FRCs are one of the biggest hurdles, like one of the biggest mountains to climb for people learning um, older Guilty Gear versions like pre-Exert. And you know, Melee has FRCs, but honestly, if you want to play this character at like a semi-competitive or competent level, you don't actually need them. Like her most more important FRC is this one, hair car, along with disc. And even though they're the most important ones, you can totally get by without knowing them. So that's one really big plus to learning her is you don't actually need to learn FRCs. It's not like other characters like you know Soul or Eno, who are if you can't do like a specific FRC like Gunflame or Horizontal Chemical Love, then you can't do anything. So she doesn't have that problem. You can you can get by just fine with that FRCs. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is differences. Um, one of the moves that defines melee is Disc. So let's go with H Disc. Compared to Exert, um, the Disc is better and worse in some ways. Uh, number one, if you do the Disc, oops, I pressed the wrong button there. Uh, I can't really demonstrate the dummy, but uh, one thing about Exert Disc is that if you block something while it's out on the field, it disappears. That's not the case in this game. So if you block while it's out, it persists. So if you're using it as a spacing tool and you just wait for your opponent to come to you, that's, that's stronger in this game since it persists. Um, however, it doesn't last as long as the Exert version. It also only hits once. The Exert version just hits twice. Well, this one lasts a shorter period of time and only hits once. So because of that, that makes certain confirms much harder. For example, disc into a bad mood if I can actually do it. <laughs> like, see how hard that is to confirm? Like, I need to, usually I just need to FRC it to actually combo off of that. So, comboing off certain things, off of certain disc setups is very, very difficult in this game, especially mid screen. In the corner, it's easy, but mid screen, uh, you know, again, if I can do it, like, that's also really hard, too. That's like a really common anti jump setup in Exert, you know, 5k, 2k. So yeah, disc is really different. Uh, it's better and worse in some ways. The the second thing I want to talk about is pin, because you know pin's one of the most important tools she has. So in this version of the game, she has three versions of pin. She's got S, H S, which is the same as uh, Exit Rev Two, and K pin. So K pin is really interesting. It comes down to this really really sharp angle. Um, in terms of usefulness, it's it's, not, it's actually not even that great. Like in, as a neutral game tool, uh, pin is actually more of a ground. Uh, ground pressure tool, which I'll talk about later. Uh, the other things about pin is the the pin. It's it recovers really fast. Like the recovery is almost nothing compared to Exert. And uh, something about the way it uh, preserves your air momentum is also different. So let me. The, the best way I can explain this is if I do IED pin. So take a look at the sequence I'm about to do. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do IED pin into jump kick. You see that right there. That sequence, ID pin into jump kick, is really, really hard to do next year. It's not, it's not impossible, but you need like perfect timing. Well, in this version of the game, it's just trivial. It's super free. So pin has like almost no recovery. So that's one thing that's really important. Um, other thing is the pin in this version has a cooldown. 
So if I toss the pin... You see that? I can't even pick it up. But then, uh, if you wait a bit, then you'll see the pin, it'll make a sound, and it'll start glowing, which means you can pick it up. So, there's there's actually a cooldown uh, for pin in this game, which discourages you from just throwing it out randomly. And then I want to talk about K-Pin. So K-Pin, like I said, is not very important for uh, neutral because the angle is very, very awkward, but it's pretty good for pressure. You can do things like this, like uh, Tiger Knee K-Pin and pressure like that. And then another thing I want to talk about is the S-Pin. So one very common pressure sequence in Exert is this. You do like a ground string into S-Pin, rising. But look what happens. See, in this version, when you do S-Pin, she continues rising, and you're like really, really high above your opponent's head. It's a very awkward position. When you do that exert, you're like directly on top of them. So S pin and pressure is not good in this version. Instead, you want to use K pin. Okay. Now, uh, one new thing about uh, plus R compared to exert, there's a mechanic in this game that doesn't exist in exert. It's called force break. So certain special moves have like an upgraded version you can do, which where you do the same motion, but you press the D button. And what it does is it gives you a stronger version of said special move, but then uh, consumes 25% meter. So, melee has a bunch of force breaks. The most important one is disc. So it's this move. Yeah, that is a souped up version of the disc. So, in terms of properties, that disc does not disappear even if you get hit. So that's serious business. It hits three times. It's even got a, like a vacuum effect on hit. And uh, one thing that you can do, other than, you know, mix up potential, uh, you can also even use some pressure. Uh, if you've played regular AC, you'll notice that the, the FB disc looks a little bit different. Uh, in vanilla Accent Core, whenever she did FB disc, the animation was the same as regular disc. But in this version, you can see she does like a little... Oops, I pressed the wrong button. She does a little flip up. Okay. So let's make Slayer block, actually. One second. Uh, block, please. Guard. Yeah. Alright. So, you know, when you're doing a ground pressure, you know, like that like stuff like this. Um, one thing you, you can sneak in is like this. Oops. Right? Now that's not foolproof. There's definitely a gap where your opponent can jump out or hit you, but um, you know, when they're trying to pay attention or when they're trying to like react to your mix-ups, you can sometimes get away with that. So you can even use FB disc as like a ground pressure tool sometimes. Alright, this makes Slayer not block anymore. Alright, the other force break I want to talk about is Longinus. So Longinus is very, very special because it's a force break that you can only do uh, from a move. So you have to do it from this move. You have to do Lush Shaker and then you press 214D to get like a follow-up. Oops, I did the wrong thing. Um, so Longinus is pretty good in this game because it allows you to get combos off certain situations that you couldn't do before. So one common situation is 6k overhead, especially if you land at like kind of mid-screen near the corner like this. Um, if you don't have 50% meter, you can't really do anything off of this. Like usually you just do that to super or you go into hair car, but this version of the game, you can do uh, Lush Shaker into Longinus. Like that. And you, you get that kind of follow-up combo. So that's really, really nice. And the cool thing is that, you know, if your opponent blocks it, then you, you don't do the Force Break, and then they block Lush Shaker, and Lush Shaker is actually plus on block. So you're still in a really, really good position overall. Another thing he's Longinus for is calming off a of sweep. Like, if you land this kind of hit, you know, you usually don't get anything off of it, but if you have meter, you can do this instead. Alright, same combo, right? You'll notice that Longinus, you can use that even if the first hit of Lush Shaker doesn't even connect, so you just cancel it immediately. So it's not like you have to have Lush Shaker hit before doing Longinus, you can just do it immediately. Alright, and then one thing I forgot to mention, the other force break is Air FB Disc. Uh, it's a little bit different than the ground version, only hits once. Uh, it's a really, really good spacing tool. You can also use to add damage to the end of your combos. Uh, one somewhat, somewhat of gimmick you could have is you could use it as a cross-up and pressure off a jump in. Like, you could do something like this. Right, and get a combo off of it. Uh, I'll talk more about how I did that, because I used an air dash cancel, which is a mechanic you don't see in Exert. Alright, so that's it for force breaks. Now let's talk about different moves. So the first move I want to talk about that's a little bit different uh, is 6P. So, across the board, 6Ps are worse in Exert. Like, every single one. This is not just a Amelia thing, this is everyone. Everyone's 6P is just a little bit worse in Exert compared to uh, the XX series. And Amelia's no dis different. So, her 6P is godlike in this game. It's one of the best. Uh, 
And so there are situations that if you, in Exert, if you use 6P, you trade or lose. In this, in this version of the game, you end up winning. So that, that requires a little bit of experimentation. Another thing, however, about 6P in this version is it's jump cancelable. That's really, really, really good. That's insanely strong. Wait, why is it jumping forward? Okay. Um, so that, that, the reason that's strong is because sometimes when you 6P people, you 6P anti air people at this really, really awkward range where nothing connects. So like I do 6P, 2H misses, or I do 6P, and then I can't slash them because I'm too far away for close slash to connect. Well, in this version of the game, that doesn't matter because you just jump cancel 6P. So that's a really, really nice quality of life change, right? Really, really nice quality of life change. So that's really, really good. Um, other normals include far slash that are changed. Uh, her far slash is still her best poke by far. You know, it's really hard to combo it off into anything, but it's still a really, really strong quality poke. In this version of the game, it's jump cancelable. That's really, really good. All right. Next up is 2S. Uh, in this version of the game, 2S can cancel into 5P. So you can sometimes do pressure sequences like that where... Um, let's make Slayer block. I understand that's very, very difficult of a request, but let's make Slayer block here. Right, so... Melia's ground pressure isn't really that amazing, but combined with the 2S 5P whiff string along with K-Pin, you do get, you know, the potential for, like, ground pressure is a little bit better in this version compared to Exert. Like, you're still not going to get, like, the Kai or, like, um, Slayer-style pressure where they keep you blocking for a while, they crank your guard bar, and then they just murder you off one counter hit. You can't do that, but you still have better ground pressure options in this game compared to Exert. So you can do stuff like this, like, standard melee stuff, you know, you know, like this. You know, something like that, right? So you have more options. It's really, really interesting. Uh, 6H is next. Uh, 6H in this version of the game is a little bit different. In Exert, 6H hits twice, and in order for it to knock down, if you hit someone in the air, it's, you have to like hit with it like fairly low in the air, otherwise they tech out. Like you need the second hit to connect when they're like really low, like almost close to the ground. In this version of the game, 6H hits once, and it's always a knockdown. So that's really nice. Uh, however, it's not jump cancelable. So in that sense, you know, uh, it's you can't really get away with using 6H in a string because in Exer you can actually use it in certain pressure strings. In this game, no. 6H is purely a combo ender. You never ever use it for anything outside of that. All right. Next up is Dust. This is what our Dust looks like in this game. Yeah, that's uh, that's absolute trash. Don't use it. Uh, Milia's Exer Dust is quite good since she like rolls back, like <laughs> literally. Uh, she does like a, a little roll back, which l allows you to evade some moves, and um, it has a lot of uses outside of just being a high low like mix up tool. In this version of the game, her not only is her dust really really slow, it barely leads to damage, and she just has better options. So yeah, just don't press this move. Her her dust is garbage. It's like probably one of the worst ones in this entire game. So don't use that move. All right, next up is her ground throw. So I'm going to throw Slayer right now and watch what happens. Ah, he teched. So that's one difference. Uh, her ground throw in this game does not knock down. So if you want to get a knockdown or a throw, you must combo off of it. Now luckily, comboing off a throw in this version is very, very, well not very, very, but it's much easier to do than it is compared to Exert. In Exert, comboing off a throw is very, very difficult against certain characters. Like you need like really, really good timing. But in this version of the game, she recovers off her ground throw much faster, so it's way easier to do a combo. So yeah, you must combo off her throw in this version if you want to get a knockdown. Like that, something like that, okay? Alright, so that, that covers everything about the ground. Next I want to talk about the air. So, in the air, uh, the first normal that's slightly different is jump kick. This move. Alright, really, really great move. You know, still really strong, really, really nice uh, upward hitbox. So if you want to use it in like a... Like in an air-to-air spacing game, it's really, really strong to, to, for air-to-air. -air. Uh, one thing that's new in this version is the level of the move. It's level 2, I believe, compared to level 1 for like almost every other Guilty Gear version. Now, what that means is it's way easier to combo into big stuff. So here is a situation that comes up very, very often in every Guilty Gear version. You do a jump and string like this. KPK, right? And then in Exert, if you want to combo off of that, usually what to do is you land and then you do two, 2k afterwards, but then because of the the way her Gatlings work, you can't really get a knockdown off it. It's really, really difficult. So you do something like this. Oops, if I can do it. 
Okay, that, that was actually very interesting. It, it, I don't understand why that worked. It shouldn't have worked. Okay, see that? Okay, so you get that really, really awkward spacing where, like, you want Far Slash to come out, but Close Slash comes out instead and then it whiffs Slayer, right? And then sometimes you'll get Far Slash instead, but you'll be too far to land a 2D knockdown afterwards. So one thing you do, one thing that's very important to learn in this game is because two, uh, Jump Kick has more hit stun, it's much easier to combo it into 5S. Oh, I messed up. <laughs> Dropping all the spaghetti here. All right, all right. There we go. See, see that sequence is very, very difficult to do exert. Like, uh, you, in order for that to work, like your timing has to be perfect, and the opponent has to be crouching so they get the extra hit stun. But in this version of the game, it's way easier to do because uh, a jump kick has more hit stun. So that's a really nice quality life change. Um, you know, it's really important for a lot of things like doing ID pin like this. You know, something like that. Not just 5S, you can also, if your timing is really good, you can, you can even combo Jump Kick into 5H as well. Let me see if I can do it. I probably won't be able to, but let's try it. Oh, see? But yeah, it is possible, just trust me on that. <laughs> it's possible. Alright, next up is JH. So, her Jump H in this game, compared to Exert or Rev 2 at least, uh, it's like an Angel Wing. Uh, I just did a burst there in accident. Um, so, compared to the, the Rev version, it's worse as a jump in because it doesn't cross up. Right? Yeah, you know, it doesn't actually hit behind you. Uh, Jump H in this version is mainly a combo tool. You don't really use it in neutral. However, if you do hit someone air to air with it, you definitely don't use it air to ground. But air to air, you know, if you if you aim to hit some of the tip of the angel wing, it's pretty good. Uh, one really thing, one really nice thing about it is um, if you hit someone the air with it on counter hits, it's completely untankable. Why did they jump forward? See. So that's really, really nice. Okay, so that's that's basically Jump Age. So very, very different than the Exer version of it. Uh, let's make Slayer stand again. Alright. The other move I'm going to talk about is J2H. This is a new move. Uh, this, this move only exists in uh, Plus R. This is what it looks like. Yeah, it's the helicopter, helicopter. So... The Rev version of Hel- or um, not the Rev, the uh, Plus R version of Helicopter is very, very different. It has very, very little hit stun, like almost no hit stun at all. So basically, um, it hits three times, and most of Melia's combo theory is going to involve comboing into J2H, and you're aiming to make it so that the third and final hit uh, connects as close or as low as possible to the ground. Because if you do it that, that low, then it'll knock down. But if it's like not the lowest possible point, then it won't knock down. So a lot of our combos in this version look something like this. Right, so that's... You, you can see J2H uh, hit three times there and it, it caused a knockdown, but... So a lot of our combos you, you involve the air dash cancel mechanic, which I'll talk about next, uh, and you just try to gently bring down your opponent close to the ground so that J2H hits three times and the final hit lands when they're really uh, low in the air. Okay. So now let's talk about air dash cancel. That's a new mechanic that Millie has in this version. It's really, really cool. So there are three moves that Millie has in the air, and these can be canceled with air dashes. And so those those three moves are JS, JH, and JD. It's like this. Oops. Like that. All right. So that's really, really important. That's a big part of her combos. Most of her combos involve going to JH and then air dash canceling it into J2H or another JH, and you just try to bring down your opponent close to the ground. Um, now you can also cancel to air backdash, although that's usually there's usually no reason to do that. Okay, so yeah, ADC is a really really cool mechanic. Not only is it good in combos, you can even use some pressure. So if you make let's make Slayer block. Actually, it's fine, but you can do stuff like this in this version, right? So that's really, really nice. So when you get a jump in with a JS, you can just land and do something, or you can just air dash again and do something else. Sometimes you can get some really, really stupid strings like that. Alright. So ADC is really, really cool. It's a, it's a new mechanic she has in this version. And then finally, there's Jump Dust for the final air normal. So her Jump Dust in this game, this is literally the only version of the game that her Jump Dust works like this. In every other version, her Jump Dust is really, really fast. Uh, in plus R, her Jump Dust is very, very slow. Okay. Compared to Exert, you cannot uh, gathering into it from JS, so you can't do the JSJD string. So it's very, very slow, but if it hits, it's more dangerous. So JD does more damage, 
It also knocks down guaranteed. And if you land this move when the opponent is close to a wall, it'll actually cause a wall bounce. Okay, let me, let me just do that again, sorry. Okay, like that. So usually that happens in the corner. So yeah, if you land Jump Dust in the corner, even on a normal hit, you get a full combo. So that's that's insane. That's really, really good. And of course, on counter hits, you know, it always causes a wall bounce, and you can combo off that as well. So her Jump Dust in this game is uh, more high commitment because of how slow it is. Like, uh, if you if you look at other Guilty Gear versions, something you could do is you could do Jump Dust, and, like Rising Jump Dust, and you can recover fast enough to double jump again or to air dash again. But in this version of the game, if you jump dust, that's it. You, you gotta land, because <laughs> it just lasts for a long time and uh, more recovery. So it's a it's a higher risk, higher uh, higher commitment move, but if it lands, the, the return is much higher. And then she also has like some special like uh, combos, like really, really swag, like combo video stuff involving dust loops in the corner, but that's not really something you have to learn as a new player. Okay. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about, we've we basically already covered like all the new stuff, like all the new normals and specials that got changed. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about for this video, this is going to be a big section, this is uh, just tips and tricks. So certain things to keep in mind when you're doing combos. So most of our combos in this game, like I mentioned, you launch them and you use your air dash cancels to try to just slowly bring your opponent down, you know, low in the air so that J2H hits three times and so the third hit um, lands as, you know, as low as possible to the ground as possible in order to get the knockdown. So let's do a generic combo on Slayer. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a combo that works on almost everyone. This is a very, very damaging combo that you can do, like a DP punish. So if you start with a grounded 5S, it, this is a rejump combo. So I'm going to do it, and then Slayer is most likely going to tech out at the end of the combo, and I'll explain why this happens. Hopefully this works right. Oh, that, that, that wasn't right. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's, let's try again. Okay, if, if I can do it correctly. <laughs> Dropping all the spaghetti right now. Aha, see? Okay, so I did a really, really standard rejump combo, and Slayer teched at the end. So the reason he teched at the end was because I did J2H, and J2H did hit three times, but the third hit of it landed too high in the air, so Slayer was able to tech. So there are a couple of adjustments you can make to your combos to prevent that from happening. So one thing, one big adjustment you can do is the air dash cancel. So you'll notice that in these combos, what I do is I do a launch, JH, oops, JH, and then I cancel JH through air dash. So one thing that's really important is that that air dash, it doesn't have to be done immediately. You can actually delay the air dash cancel. So usually, um, and the, again, this is situational because, you know, in this game, there's not really any universal combos. The combos are very, very situational, especially for Milia. But when you air dash cancel, um, I would say like 95% of the time, you usually want to delay it. You don't want to do it right away. So look how this combo changes, or look what happens when we delay the air dash cancel now. So I'm gonna do the exact same combo, but now I'm gonna delay the air dash. Wait, wait, I messed up, sorry. <laughs> Let's try that again. Okay. If you now if you, the problem is if you delay it too much, then he texts out, but yeah. There we go, see? So now, because we delayed it slightly, now the third hit of J2H lands just low enough so that it's a knockdown. Now that's just one thing we can do. There's, there's also some other things we could do. Another thing you can do is if you're worried that it's not gonna knock down, you can tack on a bad moon at the very, very end there. So let's try that. Oops. Aha, see? So that also works. So if you do a bad moon at the end, uh, sometimes it'll help you get a knockdown. Now the problem with bad moon is that it adds extra hits to the combo. So depending on the spacing, it might make it so that uh, it pushes you out of the perfect spacing for H-Disc uh, mix-up afterwards. So it's all situational, but yeah, that's one thing you can do. Now another thing, other enders you can do if you have resources. Uh, this ender requires meter, but here's something else you can do. Okay, if you have meter, you can do J2H, and when you land, you do either uh, 
you know, 5S into Lush Shaker into Longinus. Or you don't do 5S, you just land Lush Shaker Longinus. So uh, that extension, that ender, requires meter, so it's not something you want to do all the time. Um, the main time you'd want to use that ender is if you don't have pin. So if you don't have pin, you, you're going to hit someone and, you know, they're in the corner and you're like, oh god, I, I'm not sure I can get a knockdown here. But you have meter, then you can use that as a, a combo ender just to ensure you get a knockdown. Okay. And then finally, the most important ender, or at least the one that always works, is kind of like a band-aid because it just fixes everything, is pin. So if you're not sure that your... J Oops, I messed up. Uh, if you're not sure that your combo is going to knock down, then just pin. Pin 6H, like that. Okay. Now, of course, you don't always have pin, right? Sometimes your pin's away, or you had to use pin to get in, so when you landed the hit, you don't have it anymore. So it's really important to learn all the different variations and, you know, know what options you have with pin and what options you have without pin. Uh, the last resort, if you really are in a very awkward situation and none of these options will work, then your last option is Air FB Disc. This is a little hard to set up, so let me, let me see if I can do it. Um, Okay, that, that was really bad, but you, you, get the, you get the idea, right? Um, if you're in this very, very awkward spacing where nothing's going to knock down, then you could just combo into Air FB Disc and just like do a 6H. Now, that's really, really bad, because usually it gives you its out-of-corner knockdown, which is very weak, and usually it's at a spacing where if you do Disc, your opponent just doesn't even wake up into it, so they just get away for free. But it is, it's like a last resort option if you really, really need the damage and need the knockdown. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, a situation that happens very, very often against light characters. So let's actually switch characters here. Let's not play against Slayer. Uh, let me see if I can replicate this. I'm actually not sure. This might, this might require a little experimentation. I think Soul is the one I want. Okay, you see what happened there? I tried to do the same combo we've been doing on Slayer, right? But then after I did the air dash jump to H, I like undershot uh, Soul. I went under him and just completely ruined the combo. Let's see if it'll happen again. Okay, it didn't happen this time, but it's something that does happen sometimes. Okay, see, like that. So that happens a lot. And specifically, it happens very, very often against light characters, like almost all the females, or uh, characters who have like tiny air hitboxes, like Jam. So the reason this happens is, well, twofold. Number number one, because their air hitbox is tiny, but the second reason it happens is because you have too much forward momentum. So you have to remember that in this game, when you start a combo from a dash, uh, the forward momentum you have from the dash does carry over. So the way you fix this problem is, if you start a combo from a dash, when you get to the jump part, do not jump forward. Instead, jump up, straight up. Sometimes you can even jump backwards, but that's that's kind of risky, so you usually jump up. So let's try it now. Oops, so I'm gonna jump uh, up here. Aha, see? So now it worked. So yeah, um, that's just a little tip. Uh, you know, if you're finding that in your combos you're undershooting, like you're just going under them, when you get to the, the air dash part, then instead of jumping forward, do a jump up instead. And uh, this, this is something that happens a lot when you're playing against light characters like Jam or Mei or Biken. Okay. Um, one really common approach during this game is uh, Air Dash Jumpy. Let's, let's turn on Counter Hit, actually. So one thing about this game is that Jump Punch does not actually combo into Jump H normally, but on Counter Hit, it does. So let's turn on first counter hit, and let's make soul jump. Let's actually neutral, let's reset back to neutral here. I didn't mean to taunt there, sorry. Alright, so a very, very common approach is, especially like uh, when you're going to air to air neutral, if your opponent's trying to jump away from you and they, they, they throw out like a heavy normal to like control space, like Kai jump H, then you can intercept them with an ID jump punch. Now, comboing off a jump punch is very, very difficult, but if you, can, if you cancel the jump punch and jump H, then it'll combo on counter hits, and it'll give you ample time to continue the combo. So let me give an example right here. Oh, I messed up there. Okay. 
like that. Okay, I messed up the combo there, but yeah, you get the idea, right? Um, if you do ID jump punch uh, on counter hit, it combos and jump H, and then jump H has a fair amount of hit stun, so then you can just re jump and continue the combo from there. All right, and then last thing, probably last thing I want to talk about. Let's actually let's continue jumping, but turn off counter hit. Um, I mentioned earlier that jump kick is like one of the best air to air options, like this. But it's a little bit awkward to combo off of, because in this version of the game, um, Melee's Helicopter doesn't have much hit stun. Like, you need to hit with it very, very low in, in order for it to knock down. So here are some things you can do when you land Jump Kick. Here's the most common string. Let's see if I can do it properly. Like that, okay. I didn't get a knockdown, that's fine. It's just a little bit of damage. Now I got a knockdown, so something like that. So that's how you follow up, you know, random jump kick hits. You just do KPK uh, and then a double jump into KH. Actually, that's something I forgot to mention earlier. Uh, I should have mentioned I can't believe I forgot it, but jump kick in this game, uh, it actually combos to jump H. Like that. That that Gatling does not exist in Exert, so that's a new thing in this game. Okay, so I think that is it for this uh, quick tutorial. Um, Again, I'm not going to go specifically into combos. I'm pretty sure there are better resources or other videos out there that show you how to do combos in this game. Um, although, I mean, if people want me to do a combo tutorial, I could do it. I would say, though, that in this game, uh, her combos are more difficult compared to Exert, but easier compared to Vanilla AC, which is like the, the pinnacle of like difficult melee. Um, and the reason they're difficult is because they're just so different, and they're, they're very specific and very situational. And certain characters will just give you nightmares. Like, if you play against Johnny, or Biken, or May, or Cliff, or Jam, you're just like, fuck my life. Like, I can't do anything. Like, what kind of mistakes did I make in my life to get in the situation where, like, half my stuff doesn't work, right? Like, th th that, that kind of stuff happens. So, but other than that, uh, her combos in this game, they do require a little bit of practice, but they're not really that bad. Compared to AC, at least. Alright. So yeah, I think that is it for the tutorial. Um, let me know if you guys want to see anything else. Like a combo tutorial or anything else. But I think that's that about covers everything that's different, or all the important stuff that's different about this character compared to her Exert version.